Mark chapter 3, verse 21. And when his friends, Jesus' friends, heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. Everybody wants to get Jesus. They want to get rid of him. So if we're to be Christ-like and we are loved by the world, or I was in a church and they had a plaque on the wall that the city had given the plaque to this church and how great and wonderful they are. Jesus never got a plaque. He got the cross. The disciples we just talked about got violent deaths. For they said he's beside himself. They say he's mad. He's crazy. So if you are a Christian and profess to be a Christian, and your family, your friends, you know, you're mad, you're crazy. You got a biblical standpoint. You got biblical grounds that you're doing something right. Even Paul speaks about it. We're not to be loved by the world. Marble not, my brethren, if the world hates you. And today, the lads are seeing church age. We want to get along. We want all the world to love us and that. And, and all are welcome. That's not biblical. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, now the scribes are the ones that handled the word, the roles, rewriting, by the prince of devils, plural, casteth he out devils. Beelzebub, that's the lord of the flies. He is prince of the devils. Now here we go. Here we go into an S star thing. And I'm getting sick and tired of Facebook saying, oh, you know, you're wrong. Fact check. My Bible's a fact check to your fact check. Why don't you shut your fat mouth and speak the truth? And it's bad enough Bible scholars go along with Facebook and Facebook goes along with Bible scholars. And so the, the, the Christian wants to learn doesn't know nothing. Shut your fact tape mouth. Now, Beelzebub is a prince of devils. He's a deity of the Philistines. Baal. He's the chief god. Baal. Throughout Canaan. Baal is the god of all gods. The anti-god of the heathen world to be God himself. Let's ask Jesus what about this God rather than going to the, the, the scholars and buying books at the bookstore. He called them unto him, Jesus, and said unto them in parables, you guys start speaking parables because you know what? They're outright rejected him already. First three chapters in Mark, and they're listen, the Pharisees want to get him, the people want to get him, the scribes want to get him. All right, Beelzebub, verse 22. How can Satan cast out Satan? There's Beelzebub. That's the Lord of the flies. That's one of the gods that Jehovah attacked Egypt. When he had all the flies going to Egypt. That's the flies when you when you watched the Andrew Hart before I was saved. And he, he got the room there, you got the priest in the room, the window shuts, and the whole room fills with flies. And this is the movie where the guy gets into a transporter and there's a fly into him, and he transforms himself into a human fly. Okay? So what they're saying is, he has Satan, and by the prince of the devil, Satan casts out the devil. So the power of Satan, Jesus is doing what he is doing. That's what they're saying. You got to understand that. If a kingdom be divided against itself, well, America versus Russia, China versus Japan, North Korea versus South Korea, England versus uh, Erie. 
all right? Democrats versus the Republicans. The kingdom cannot stand. All right, so we got, let's just take, we got the Republicans bowing to Democrats and Democrats bowing against the Republicans. It's not going to stand, according to Jesus. And you can't say God bless America when your government defies what Jesus said. If a house be divided against itself, the house cannot stand. All right, so you marry as a Christian, a non-Christian. You want Jesus Christ, you want the Bible, you want Baptist preaching. Your spouse wants a religion, doesn't want anything, doesn't believe in God, and you know you thought you were going to change him. You got Jesus Christ up against whatever you married. That house ain't going to stand, according to Jesus. So don't go crying, oh, I married this unsaved person, oh, 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 everything's just broke. Why don't you just shut up? Why don't you repent? Now you're going to do some sowing. Because God is not going to put you in a time machine, oh, you don't go, oh, 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 oh. I told my children, I said, you ever marry an unsaved person? I am not honoring that marriage. And don't you dare come crying to me. If you've got troubles and problems, all that, and you want to lay the grandchildren on me, I am not buying it. The Bible specifically said, you're not to marry an unsaved person. And when you do marry somebody, and you better be honest and sure that they're saved and doing what they're supposed to be. Because I've met those marriages too. Oh, he said he was saved, and then when we got married, well, he said he said he was saved, or did he do be in salvation? Big difference. If Satan, okay, here we go. So we got a kingdom. We got a house. So you think all church houses are of God? Satan rise up against himself. And be divided. He cannot stand. But has an end. And he has an end. And it, Jesus says King, Satan has a kingdom. Satan has a house. God has a kingdom. God has a house. So does Satan. God has ministers. So does Satan. And we know, if you read the end of the book, we know Satan, in the end, loses. I don't know if you would call hell a kingdom or a house, but he, with all his people, get the lake of fire for all eternity. But he has no power. So rest assured when, when Satan is in the lake of fire for him that's the end you don't need to worry about him no more you don't need to worry about what if he rebels what if he goes against and it's not going to happen no man can enter a strong man's house all right here's a house strong man that's satan satan is strong you realize ever since adam and eve all the human beings that Satan has dealt with and the human race of those people challenged by Satan, how many have lost? You realize how many men and women are going to be eternity in hell because the strongness of Satan. And he only has three tools. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Yea, hath God said, begin all in the, in the garden. Satan has a house. It's, it's this world. And when you say, he's got the whole world in his hand, it ain't God, it's the devil. Come on, look around the world. Do you think that righteousness is, is dwelling and, and, and the name of Jesus is prevailing over the world? 
Well, that's what my preacher said. Well, you need to look at your preacher then. Spoil his goods. Except he first, he will first bind the strong man. He, Jesus, bind thousand year reign the strong man. Satan's put in chains. Jesus comes to the earth and sets up his, his government, sets up his kingdom. There's the kingdom. Sets up the nation of Israel as the only people. And Satan will have no power during that reign of Jesus Christ. How strong is he? At the end of that thousand years, Satan is loose and he gathers an army against Jesus and against the Jews and God just wipes them out. Then he will spoil his house. How does Jesus spoil the devil's house? He takes the curse away except the serpent. The serpent is the only one that retains the curse. Meanwhile, you know, you've got foxes and wolves laying down with lambs. and You wouldn't even find that in a kitchen. Barely, I say unto you, can I say something? Can I go off the wall here? We're having this weekend, we're having Passover, three days, Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave. That's Sunday. We also had Esther, Easter on Sunday, same day. I hate those years when it does, but we get to say, can I show you how much your Easter is wrong? One of your fascinating meals for Easter is ham. Ham is no no for Passover. Hot cross buns. Leaven is no no for the feast of unleavened bread. Checkmate, I win. God's great. You're not. Repent. Get right. All right, I, I, I had to say that. Uh, verily I say unto you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. So all means all that all means all. You, have you heard that before? I wrote a California preacher, and I say all means all that all that has to be all. And I say when, they, when, when the men were cast into the den, the lions safe, and it says that the lions broke every bone, all bones, the hammer, the anvil. I forgot the name of the third ear was in the ear. All them bones were broken. All means all that all means all. all, all this, okay. Forgiving the sons of so all sins will be forgiven. Blasphemies, wherever soever they shall blaspheme. You can cuss the name of Jesus, you can GD and every D and all kinds of B's and B to do that, and it's filthy. And if you come to Jesus and repent and get right, God will forgive and cleanse you. All sin. There is no sin you cannot you cannot bring to God. Verse 29, we got a problem. But problem. He that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost has never forgiven. I would think blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is a sin. All that means, all that means, all that all is to be all. Well, but if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, so all that means all that all means all sounds good, but Jesus said, You're wrong. What is the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost? Well, we go back up. He has Beelzebub, he has the Satan, and by the prince of the devil, Satan, he casts out devils. Now, Jesus is going around working the works of the Holy Ghost in him. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. What they're saying is the Holy Ghost that Jesus has is the unholy ghost. It is actually Satan. And Satan's exercising his authority over his devils. Not God. So in other words, Jesus is not God, Jehovah Witnesses. 
that what Jesus is doing is he's going through Israel, Judah, and everything he's doing is because Satan is working in him. Now, you cannot do that sin today. There is no <coughs> unpardonable sin today. <coughs> Satan didn't want me to say what I want to say. In order to do the unpardonable sin, Matthew 12, Luke 11, Mark 3, is you have to have Jesus physically here on the earth, healing, casting out devils, and you can have me physically walk up to Jesus, be in the crowd and say, he's doing that by the devil, by Satan. Well, you're not going to do that today because Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And Jesus physically is not casting out devils. So you couldn't say. Now, what if you say everything going on in the church and all that, you know, it's of the devil and all that. Well, that's not Jesus. Because Jesus said, all men are blasphemies. If you'd repent and get right, they would be forgiven. You can turn around and say, that guy that got saved today, he didn't really get saved. Uh, you know, It's just nonsense in the church. And, all. and then later on, repent and get right. Okay, God will forgive you. Now, could somebody today actually say that the work of Jesus today is of Satan? Yes, they could. But they can repent today. You have to actually have Jesus right there, you right there, and in the crowd or even to his face, which, which the Sadducees and Pharisees and the scribes do, in his face, you're doing this by Satan. You can't do that in the church age today. Now, here we go. What is this unpardonable sin against the Holy Ghost? One more time, because they said he has an unclean spirit. There are people today who will say Jesus is not God. Jesus just a man, a sinner. Are you telling me they cannot be saved ever? Because the Jehovah Witnesses say that. There are people who rightly, outright profess that, you know, Jesus did not die. He, he, he passed out, and when he touched the cold rocks, and he, boing, he came to life. And there are people who say that the resurrection and all that was of the devil, was magic and you tell me they can't get saved? I tell you they can. Not the religious group of, of Israel. Again, you got to rightly divide. What's the Gospels? What's Matthew, Mark so far? It's the nation of Israel. There are no Gentiles. There are no churches. Do you realize right now, I'm going to say, here we go, just came to thought. The government of Rome is having Easter. Israel, Judah is having the Passover, and they're not the same. Rome is celebrating Esther. I don't care. There was no Facebook back then. She's the god that has all the little boobies that look like eggs. I try posting those pictures on my Facebook. Sometimes Facebook shoots it down. She looks like those little eggs you send your children after. So what has God has done? Eggs are twelve dollars a dozen today. I don't think very many people are gonna waste twelve bucks to colored eggs, but there will be. Oh, it, what we'll do is we'll go to the store and we'll get those little plastic eggs made by China that gave us COVID fifteen, they say. Sixteen, whatever I forget what the number was. You're going to celebrate S Star no matter what. You know, during the COVID epidemic, churches were closed, but Easter wasn't. Again, I said, ham is a Easter meal. 
not for the Jews. I, if, if I had the money, and if I was cruel as people said I would, I would bring to a church fellowship two meals for a fellowship. I, I would bring roasted rabbit, which I've had and cooked before. It's delicious. And orange Peking duck, which is good. I've had it before, and my wife made it. I would have the Easter bunny in one part of the tray, and I would have the, the uh, oh boy, I've been, I forget today's message too. Um, oh, what's the, the Pete's duck. So when the kids walk by my plate at church, ah, Easter bunny. <laughs> You wouldn't do that. You don't know what I would do. So, the unpardonable sin caused by man, Jesus said the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is to say that the Holy Ghost in Jesus is the actual work of Satan. And for the scribes and Pharisees we read about in the Gospels, it's a possibility. Because look, he says, has never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Can they get saved? Yes. But that one sin is not going to be forgiven. There are Christians who will have sins that will give to account and it will burn up wood, hay, or stubble. Sins that, you know, you never asked for forgiveness and never sought God for forgiveness. This is the same case here. But if they don't repent, they don't get right, danger, eternal damnation, going to hell for that sin, according to Mark. Because they said he had, Jesus has an unclean spirit, the Holy Ghost. Be careful what you say. There came then his brethren and his mother. We know that's Mary. And in the Gospels, they don't say Mary. They say mother. It's like somebody knew that somebody's going to raise her up on a pedestal. She don't belong. Now, she's a remarkable woman, but not the woman that the Catholics put her to be. And then when Jesus addresses her, he says, woman. Show that to your Catholic friends and watch them blow circuits. Even Mary herself said one day, and I forget how it is, one day thou shalt call me blessed. Yeah, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary was a prophetess. Mary was clean enough that God could use her, but she's not God. She's not the mother of God. And standing without, sent unto him, calling him. So on the outside of this multitude, there's his family, his brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles. And it's funny how they don't talk about the grandparents of Jesus. The multitude sat about him. So here's a group of people sitting around Jesus, listening to him. And they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren, without seek for thee. Hey, Jesus, yeah, your mother and your brethren, they want to see you. He answered them and said, Who is my mother or my brother? You know, what a way to answer them. I mean, if I was sitting in church one day and, and, and somebody comes to me and says, You know, Stanley, your daughter wants to talk to you. Well, who is my daughter? That's kind of rude. Suggestion to the fact is, while he's living in his earthly body, before the resurrection, they're not listening to him. They're not following him, including his mother. And he looked round about them that sat with him, who had been listening to him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. These are the people who's listening to me. If my mother and brethren were listening to me, why are they not here sitting, listening to me right now? Where are they? 
And there's many Baptists out there, their brethren, whether they call themselves Christians or not, they're outside the church assembly. But the Christians will go join the family worship, the family picnic, the family barbecue, the family outing against Jesus. Oh, where's your family? I mean, they may be maybe in another church in another place, state, whatever. Okay, but that's not where your family is. And you got to look at Mark chapter 3 is if they were in the right place, and here comes church. This is not a church. Here's assembly of people. If Mary and his brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, whoever's in that group, if they were doing right and following Jesus, they would have been in that circle of people. Now watch, 31 again. There came then his brethren and his mother. They came. They weren't there. Standing without, they're not even in the crew. Boys, you see Jesus? Yeah, Mom, see him over there. And he's in the middle of those people. And they sent him calling him. They don't even come themselves. I know somebody, and I'm not going to mention names. I don't want to raise the ruckus. I believe there's somebody not saved who's saved because Grandma called Jesus a foreigner's child. Now, I don't know about salvation. But you can't have somebody call upon Jesus for you. And that's what Mary and the brethren are doing. What? I mean, if that person could go up to Jesus and say, hey, your mother and brethren are here. Why don't they go? Excuse me, excuse me, mother of Jesus. Excuse me, brother, brother of Jesus. Excuse me, that's my, that's my brother of Excuse me, excuse me, that's my son. Excuse me. You would think they would give her time and place and let her give up. And the multitude sat about him, okay? That's not where Mary is. And it did not say previous chapters and Matthew that there was no so because we just read previous and Mark, there was no so like they couldn't even eat a meal. They could not get into the house, they couldn't even go in through the door. It doesn't say that. There is no recording of forbearance that they, no one else could come. That has been recorded with the men that brought their friend in the bed and they broke up the roof. They couldn't get into the house. They were even amidst the, the windows. And then we just read previous in Mark, they couldn't even eat. It was, you know, you go grab a piece of bread and you pull someone's hand. Oh, wait a minute, I want the bread. I don't want your hand. That's not the case here, even with the multitude. He said unto, who is my mother or who is my brother? And he looked round about them which sat about him and said, behold, my mother and my brother. The ones that are here listening to me. Your stay at home, I don't go to church because I don't want to go to church. Not because I can't go to church. Not because I'm a sit-in or I'm in the hospital or I'm in a nursing home or I got a me uh, mental or I got physical incapabilities to go to church. I ain't talking about them. There are people who don't go to church for the reason to not go to church. They stand outside the church. and Jesus says, well, who are my brethren? How come they never run to Mark in the, in the Baptist church? If you want to prove church membership and go to church, I know they run to Hebrews. That's Hebrews. So is Mark. Why don't they run to Mark? Jesus acknowledged them that are in church. I'll tell you why they don't acknowledge Mark chapter 3. Because they're not inside of four walls and fancy decoration and fancy pews. Probably outside. Probably in the temple. I've had home church in my in my dining room. People didn't like it. 
I've had Bible studies in a gazebo in a park and people didn't like it. I had a Bible studies in, in a park next to a public swimming pool and no one, one, two, three people came. I had six years preaching on the street and no one from the churches came. The only opposition I got was from the churches and the Christians. For whosoever shall do the will of God. Well, what's the will of God here? They're sitting and listening to Jesus. That's not where Mary and his brethren were. They were somewhere else. Maybe they went to Disneyland that Sunday. Maybe they went to Six Flags. Then he went fishing. I don't know. But they're not there with Jesus. Listening to Jesus. Now, now, don't go to me. Oh, you know, I go to church now. If your church is not preaching and teaching Jesus, but another Jesus with another spirit and another gospel, you are not in the attendance of Jesus. And according to 2 Corinthians, if your minister is a minister of Satan, you're definitely not listening to Jesus. And if Jesus, Revelation chapter 3, is not in your church, but standing outside your church, you're not listening to Jesus. If your church, here we go, here we go, I'm getting in trouble all the time, I don't care. If your church is celebrating Esther, if your church is celebrating Easter eggs, if your church is celebrating rabbits, you are sure not put my name, sign my name to it. You are surely not in a church of Jesus Christ. I don't care what Bible you have. I don't care what you teach. You're not to have no concourse with, with Christ and Billy Isle. Brother, that's going to happen Sunday. We're going to go have sunrise service, though Jeremiah said, that's an abomination. We're going to go and have a church-wide movie. Jeremiah, that's an abomination. We're going to have a Christmas tree. And I was in the church, Baptist church one day. We went from Jeremiah 9 to Jeremiah 11 and skipped Jeremiah 10 completely. We went in a pastor's house one time. It was around Christmas. I didn't say nothing, okay? I was nine, went over there, and they take off our jackets and all that. It's winter, and we go in the living room to sit down. He's, and he, well, you know, uh, I know what the Bible says about the Christmas tree, but it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? I didn't say nothing. That's like I will go into a store and somebody say, you know, isn't Jesus is great? I love those bumper stickers. Uh, excuse me. How do you know it's me? The store is full of people, and you point out the ones that have it. The other guy the other day, we know. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, you know, he fools around. I, I was going to take your car out of the parking spot and park there myself, you know, handicapped. How'd you know it was a car? I mean, I don't have my car no more. It's my daughter's car. But, and you don't like what I'm saying. It, it's just perfectly fine. When you are wrong, God is right. And it's too late to judge and say, oh, man. And I feel sorry for your pastor. He's going to answer to God and God's going to say. And I'm going to step up to the thing and I'm going to get my judgment. And, you know, you said about Christmas, you said about you got Christians. And, yeah, and he's going to say, well done. And in a church, well, where's our well done? If you only listen to him. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, I sent him there. And you didn't listen. It's sorry, 